It's my first time. All right. Thank you everyone for joining. We're so excited to be hosting um, a VidCode 101 webinar for libraries today. And so I wanna welcome um, everyone who joined and everyone who might watch. Um, hopefully everyone who's joined is either a, a current library partner or someone who might be checking us out. Um, and so thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. Um, I'm gonna start by giving an overview of VidCode and um, then we'll uh, move into our presentation. I have a slide deck that we'll be sharing with you guys um, once we roll into the presentation uh, that you'll also have after this with all the links. Um, and I'll also go through a demo. We can all get ready to set up your own free account on VidCode if you don't already have an account set up. And we'll go through some of the kind of tips and tricks with the coding tutorials themselves. So with no further ado, just to share a little bit um, about VidCode as, um, as a general description. So we are a creative coding platform really designed with teens and students' interests in mind. So we really think about the teenager a lot um, when we're creating our content. And we've designed it ground up with their interests and creativity in mind. So a lot of the libraries that we work with today um, launch VidCode in the youth center, in the children's center, um, along with the robot robotics programs, um, typically to go deeper into the coding side. Um, and we'll talk about that a lot today. Um, so we have over 300 plus open-ended coding tutorials that teach um, the fundamentals of both web programming and computer science. And we, as I mentioned, we focus on connecting to things that students and teenagers love. Um, and so that means that, sorry if I'm coming in and out, just let me know, um, that anyone on Big Code, a patron or a learner, and we, with libraries, just a heads up, we do both in-person programming and remote learning opportunities, which I'll show you guys throughout the presentation. Um, but all learners on VidCode get to learn how to code through making things like Snapchat filters, meme makers, video filters, video games, 3D experiences, AR experiences, celebrity name generators. <laughs> so as you can see, it's really, um, we try to keep it very current, but in an almost kind of timeless way these days. Um, and so, how our platform actually works um, is that a learner either at an in-person program at the library or if they're logging into the program remotely via a library site license, the first step they're going to take as a coder in the Big Code coding program is they're going to upload a media asset. And by that, I mean a family photo, a funny video that they love, maybe it's a research project or a homework assignment. So they can actually upload that media asset, whether it's a picture file or a video file or an illustrator file and soon to be 3d files as well they can upload that to the coding platform and then start going through all our coding tutorials all 300 using those personal media assets or research media assets as the fabric of um, every single coding project that they're working on so that's also a lot of what we're going to be talking about today um, just a couple last things about VidCode um, as a whole so after um, a learner has completed their coursework on Big Code, and it's always growing our, our library, um, but just to give you kind of an end point, they've really learned um, almost two years of both intro, intermediate, and advanced com computer science and programming. They've learned object-oriented programming. They've learned JavaScript, and they've learned interaction design. They've also, we have an AP prep course, um, that they can use at the high school level too. So they may have um, gone through that as well. So they're really prepared to go from, you know, kind of middle school to high school or high school to college. And that's why we love working with both schools and libraries because we share, um, you know, a lot of tips and tricks between um, the two spaces. So with that, I'm gonna start um, sharing slides with you guys. Um, bef before I do that, um, any questions that I can answer right off the bat um, just going to take a second to open up my share page as we do this. Um, perfect. If 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Make sure I do this right. Share. Yeah. Sorry, I just want to make sure I open the right screen for you guys one sec. I'm just going to do full. Stop picture. All right. Um, Teresa, can you see my slides? Yep. OK, great. Now I'm just going to, sometimes I just leave them a little bit open like this. Um, okay, great. So, oh, actually, this way. Sorry, give me one second. Choose any questions pop up? Nope, nothing so far. All right, good. Um, hopefully, they're brewing in the background. So, thanks for your patience, guys. Um, I am going to kick into the slides. So I shared with you a little bit about Vicar as a company. Um, we are a mission-oriented company. Um, we started back in 2014, five or six years ago, with a mission to create an online coding experience that's really appealing to everyone. We were thinking a lot about teen girls and diversity and all that stuff. Um, and so that's really baked into the experience as well. And flash forward to 2019, over 9 million students have learned to code on big code. So we take a lot of that learnings both into the online experience and how we support um, library staff and partners that we work with today. And the process that we've really gone through to make the online tutorials that we'll be going through that you can launch coding programs with at your library is to really work closely with thousands of teachers and volunteers and librarians nationwide who use our online courses and we're constantly iterating, updating them and building them based off feedback. We also do have um, a research grant from the Federal Department of Ed. So we're constantly um, working with third party researchers and educators and figuring out really what's working best for everyone. And so Vicode is um, partnered with the Girl Scouts of the USA um, as well as many other kind of big companies really to um, both show, connect our coding tutorials with the outside world, things like creating a Snapchat filter, that type of thing, as well as we've co-developed um, the recent uh, Coding for Impact school badges. And I mentioned that because a lot of those programs run at, um, at libraries. So the sixth through 12th grade Girl Scout coding badges, um, is content that we created and so that's something that we can also help libraries launch with which is kind of cool <clears throat> so one thing to mention <clears throat> oh sorry um over 75 percent of the educators on our platform and you can be either a student or an educator on a platform and really the big distinction is are you leading a program or are you participating in one? So today everyone's going to get the chance on this webinar to sign up as a student in our webinar course and then I'll give you instructions at the end of the webinar to start your own educator course where you can add your own students and that's a great way to um, use our material um, on multiple levels. And this is also just a great list of some of the output projects that um, if students like these things or if you have people coming into your libraries who are interested in things like Minecraft or Star Wars or <laughs> DJ Khaled Snapchat, all those things, um, they can learn to code on good code and they can integrate right away. So that's really important to us. All right, so I'm gonna go into the goal of this specific webinar and so the goal for this webinar is really to um, share how to set up a VidCode classroom, um, talk about what implementation might look like at your library, take a quick look at how you can monitor learners' progress, 
and how you can see and share projects in curated galleries, which is really special if you want to host a hackathon at your library, or if you want to host a, a special one-day event, or potentially even a 10-week um, intensive. We go through a couple examples there. And then we'll finish up with some Q&A. Um, and as we mentioned throughout, please feel free to chat um, questions as we go. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the interactive portion of the webinar. And we're going to, I'm going to demo for you guys. And as I do that, I wanna welcome you to um, join virtually here as the student in the webinar class. Um, and so I'm gonna give us like two to three minutes to do that. Um, so please um, feel free to go to this link, <clears throat> vidcode.com slash sign up slash student slash code and then enter this code. And then you'll actually be joined to our class, even if you have um, your own account, which we thought would be fun. All right, so yeah, like I said, I wanna take a moment to do that. Please uh, message if you have questions, it's by no means required, but for anyone who does wanna participate, um, I'll give you another minute to sign up here with this information. So I will also, Teresa, if you want to take note of this class code um, and share it in the chat, um, as well as the URL if possible, Teresa will share this information in the chat um, so people can join. And I'm going to go ahead and start logging in myself so that I can demo for the group here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. So here's the link where um, people are joining from currently. All right, and I'm going to log into my demo account. All right, so perfect. So we talked a little bit about creating an account, and we'll we'll keep talking about that throughout this webinar. Um, so um, like I said, Teresa's kind of putting in the chat if anyone wants to join this particular class um, and just go through the sign-up process. Um, so I want to start, first of all, just landing on this page. Um, this is, if you log into your VidCode account, this is the first page that you're going to see. And this allows you to organize different kind of cohorts of learners um, as we're doing today with this webinar. Um, and I want to start this demo by showing you guys the endpoints or some of the end projects on VidCode. I kind of just gave a brief or an overview of those things and here are some of the things that students can create. So I mentioned that VidCode's a very open-ended experience and this is important in so many ways. Um, it allows students to do homework on VidCode. It allows VidCode to be used as a response to a book. This is one of my favorite examples. So this is on the younger end of VidCode users. Um, this is a 10-year-old um, at one of our libraries here in California. And um, he read The Big Friendly Giant. And this is, and then used one of the early VidCode tutorials. I think this is tutorial number five or six. And he created a response to that book. And in this case, he obviously kind of drew or took a picture of himself and made himself um, the giant and, as a character. And so there's so many examples of this type of thing. Um, but a lot of our library partners do like to um, to use VidCode during uh, summer literacy in different programs in this way. Um, Cross-disciplinary is another really important example here. Um, and so this is an example of more of a middle school project, health, homework, where the student was able to use what they're learning in the VidCode coursework and workshops to complete this health science project. 
And in this case, they were able to upload a background video and then learn how to program um, this particular snippet so that as they roll um, the mouse over different parts of the heart, it's going to label that area of the heart. And on Bitcode, this is our mouse in, within our kind of mouse over tutorials in our um, intro coursework. So um, just an example of, you know, in every single one of the tutorials on the platform, you can bring in any background video, any image, and then we're constantly te teaching students how to make interactive coding projects. So the possibilities are really endless. I won't spend too much time going through the gallery, um, but everyone who has an account also has access to this. This is our curated gallery. Um, you can see a lot of different types of projects um, here, and we tend to organize it so it's the more difficult towards the end, uh, more the high school um, or pre-college kind of university style projects. Here we have a celebrity couple meme generator that's a natural language processing project. Uh, one of my favorite ad advanced projects. All right. So any questions so far on the types of projects that are created on Bitcoin? Okay, so now I'm just going to go through, you know, the experience step by step here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, go back to that main dashboard. I'm going to press start coding. Um, this will bring me into um, the actual VidCode coursework. And so whether you have um, patrons at the library who are, you know, coming in for a hackathon, coming in for a workshop, um, or maybe they're learning remotely at home, they're going to press start coding. And if they're going through um, the coursework, they're going to start with intro to JavaScript and create a filter. And so we make it very engaging and visual so that uh, learners of all kinds can see, okay, what's the end project here? How creative am I getting? What kind of special effects am I learning? Even with just some really basic information right here. Um, and I'm gonna jump into this tutorial. So VidCode can be completely independently learned, self-guided. And in that case, uh, students are moving through the instructions on the left-hand side here. And in this case, it's our very first tutorial. So they're learning what is a web programming language, what is JavaScript, all this fun stuff um, that can one day get them a great job. Um, and they get to learn in a fun media, digital media centric way, as you might imagine. So the first thing um, they're gonna do, and this is the case for, again, all 300 coding tutorials, is they're gonna pick a media asset um, that they love, that matters to them, or maybe has to do with some homework or research that they're completing at the moment. Um, so I went ahead and just uploaded um, a GIF image here. And they could automatically populated this code editor, which is a professional grade code editor, which using real JavaScript here, we auto-populated the code that makes this image appear um, on a website. And so we're doing that to start to introduce the language of um, computer science here. So if the code does start, I just click through some of the um, instructions here and we do start with um, a drag and drop environment. Um, and that's for a lot of reasons, it goes back to um, a lot of libraries and schools like to use us after scratch. Um, so this is a great way for everyone to kind of segue into text-based programming. So I just dragged and dropped this color invert filter onto my project. And I got to see it immediately change um, the visual output, which is like, whoa, okay. Now I'm gonna learn a little bit more. I'm gonna start layering filters. I'm gonna start customizing them and learning how colors are chosen on the web. What is a hex color? I'm going to learn what a value is, that this just isn't a number. It holds um, a great amount of data that's changing my project here quite immediately. And then I can also start to play around and see, you know, how to start to create a mood here. So I'm just in my first three to four seconds on Big Coda. I'm creating it, it's making it my own, and I'm learning. And this is the experience that goes on for hundreds of hours on Big Code. And students are really building their programming skills, but they're also building their ability to freestyle and create projects, you know, off the top of their head. 
um, as they complete all of the coursework. So at the end of any session, a learner can save or publish their project. Um, it exports much like a, a YouTube video and or scratch project for that matter with the code on the right hand side and the image or the creative um, artifact on the left. And there's lots of ways to share this particular project with friends or other library members or also in big curated galleries. So, um, but even just individual patrons, this is a fun way for them to, you know, whether they're in person learning together or share with other people who are doing the same thing. So with that, I want to close out the demo portion of the webinar um, by sharing with everyone some of the scaffolded resources that we provide that um, to go with the online tutorials and they really um, are quite useful. So um, I just sorry, I kind of clicked in here. I just went into the class dashboard. Um, which is on the educator account, and students have the same thing with just a couple different options. Um, and here in the educator account, I can see uh, a roster. So a lot of times um, with our library partners, this could include a roster of staff um, and a roster of patrons. Um, there's at a glance progress tracking to see, you know, who's using this and how far they've gotten through every single tutorial. Um, every video user has a portfolio, has an arsenal of projects. So this is hugely important for people who want to apply to jobs, um, schools, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is chock full and it's um, usually pretty easy to pick out the top projects and then curate those. We do have inexperienced quizzes just to check knowledge and learning along the way. It's very much kind of self-check if you're an independent learner. And then the lesson plans are really um, what's provided to library staff um, and educators to launch the in-person programming with VidCode. And so again, if you wanna launch um, a workshop, a hackathon, maybe a 10-week intensive um, to be offered at the library, um, this is where you would start. And um, besides kind of going through the coding tutorials, um, or breezing through them. So this is, these are PDFs, you can print them out, and they have, every single one has a big idea about learning the program, but also about the activity itself, which in this case is building a video filter. Um, we also have suggested agendas. So again, for those all day workshops, that can be really useful. We have background information, so any information, it's, it's a lot so you can kind of pick and choose what you might want to share, throw on the board, um, what have you. And then all 300 coding tutorials have a sample solution. Um, and so this is kind of buried in here. I always like to point this out because it's really a, a gold nugget, um, I think, for everyone on Big Code. Is if you want to run a workshop or a club with Big Code, I know a lot of our educators love to start by showing the end product. And so the lesson plans are a great vehicle to do that. Um, you can just go into the PDFs and find those sample projects. We don't make them too surface just so that, um, you know, that everyone uh, creates their own projects as well. But there are cheat sheets on the big code for um, staff. All right, and I've mentioned the showcase a few times, but this is actually where you would curate galleries. So if you're having Environmental Awareness Month, Women's History Month, all that good stuff. Um, there's much you can do in terms of kind of themes, competitions, codeathons remotely at your library as well. Um, and that's where this really takes off as a tool. Um, and so basically you can choose different projects, um, people can share them with you and then it will aggregate here. Um, to a link that you can share with patrons or put on your library site, you can also embed that. Um, so perfect. So I am going to head back just to the main page here where we started, just to review where you would start coding if you want to explore or experience the coding tutorials yourself, is just press start coding 
um, and we'll bring you to this, the top of our JavaScript coursework. But feel free to hop around as well. And then if you want to dive into our scaffolded support materials, um, make sure to have an educator account, which you can, you can sign up for both. Um, I highly recommend signing up for both. Um, and then you will have um, those PDF lesson plans that I talked about. So you can click in there, um, print, you know, print some of those, get familiar with them, and all that good stuff. So those are two really important kind of actions to take, and we'll review those in the next step as we wrap up here. But before I close um, the software demo here, any questions um, from the group that you would love for me to kind of show before I close on my screen share? Awesome. This is definitely an intro. So, uh -huh. oh, so um, you can follow up with questions as well. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. You want me to stop your uh, presentation thing? <laughs> okay, cool. All That's why there's teamwork, guys. <laughs> Teresa, thank you for saving me. Um, all right, I see a question that came in. Maybe. Let's see. Oh, great question. Um, so I'm just going to read out loud here. So Alexis asked, I've been using Bigfoot for a while and my kids love it. Some of them finish early and want to make more memes and or fun little side projects. That's great. Is there any way for them to do that without working over the project they already completed? Yes, absolutely. And I love that question. Um, so yeah, every single project they can complete um, limitless projects per tutorial. So if they just go ahead and press publish, they can then re -go, um, go back through the tutorial again and make a new project and it won't erase their old output. Um, so I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, let me know and we can also um, connect you directly to our tech team. Um, but yeah, we definitely get a lot of questions where you know students or learner, learners are um, worried about losing their um, saved projects. So this is something that we're really focused on right now. But the safest thing to do um, if you want to start a new project in a tutorial that you've ever done is press publish on the old one and, and start that tutorial again. Thank you. Great question. Right, I guess I'm sharing my screen again. Uh, All right, I'm going to share my screen one more time with you guys just to finish up the webinar here with some, some notes. All right, so I just wanted to talk through a couple of the, let me see if I can go into present mode here. Okay, great. So we're going to talk a little bit, just finish up here with a couple of, you know, potential implementations that you might be looking at 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 your particular library. Um, so coding clubs are a really popular um, format for this and Bigcode can support that or the Bigcode content um, can be used for so many different ways for coding clubs. Um, so one thing that's great about coding clubs is that students, especially at a library site, is that students can um, leave and come back and even if they've missed a session because of that progress bar um, they can either try to catch up with the class or go at their own speed um, but definitely most kind of classrooms or cohorts of learners on big code uh, move at different speeds 
Um, and I'm gonna, we'll actually be sharing this presentation. So I'm gonna just click through. And that's another good tip in terms of students moving at different speeds. And I, I love the question that was shared before about students wanting to do additional projects. So we definitely encourage um, students to, you know, do the tutorials in order and then maybe do them again, not in order, you know, and create new creative ideas each time. It's such a great way um, to utilize the coursework. And then obviously with every club, you can create a showcase. Um, so we highly encourage, um, especially people doing clubs to use that feature. Um, Bitcode does also provide lots of different um, PDFs and scaffolding material and connecting code to real life and how much of the curriculum that students are learning relates to industry professions as well. So in this PDF, we've included um, tips on kind of your first day with big code. So if you're thinking about something you want to do this fall or potentially over um, computer science week in December 2019, um, definitely come back to this slide. So another very common implementation um, for Big Code at Libraries is a 10 week after school coding club. And so today we wanna to share with you an example or a case study of that. Um, and a great one is the um, Breaking the Code program, which is run in school libraries in New York City. And this is a program that uses um, really the first 20 to 40 hours of big code. And then they paired it with um, some Girl Scout curriculum, which is a lot more focused on the filmmaking side. Um, and so that's also something that's um, very easily done with after school programs with big code. So let's say you have a robot program or something existing already. Um, you can actually spend an hour on the robots and then an hour on big code and actually document the robots or integrate them somehow into the big code project. So breaking the code is an example of integrating with a leadership curriculum and um, a leadership after school course that was already happening. And you know, here's a graph that kind of outlines what I just explained. And I would really think of it as big code really provides the coding and the filmmaking, or not even the filmmaking, but you know, if, if your um, patrons are using Photoshop or um, a wonderful film editing program, Big Code's just the perfect kind of mitt to catch that ball and have people upload the beautiful creative creations that they've made um, in a illustration or film editing application. And then I would really think of Big Code as making it interactive on the web. And so here's some pro example projects from a 10 week after school um, program implementation. And so definitely for this type of program, we highly encourage, and you can see here too, kind of themes building out through each of the tutorials. So these students started really working on their concepts about, okay, I'm making a meme here, or I'm making, um, in terms of what they've coded here, they've actually um, placed the text on the screen with the XY coordinates, Title one, Title two, so they're learning geometry, math, um, JavaScript, web programming, and then they're thinking about the message that they want to send. Um, in this case, it's a PSA announcement. So there's lots of different ways to do concept development, and we do have a lot of library partners that already have video or film programs that um, leverage video vid code there very easily. So, you know, the impact of doing um, an after school coding program today um, that we found with Big Code um, in our case studies across the country um, is we found increased confidence and abilities in STEM. Um, this is actually third party research. Um, we found that it generates positive exposure to computer science and that it's transformed students' perspective and identity on their futures. Um, so we're really excited to, to work. I know that's very mission aligned um, with many, with everyone, every library. Um, and then the impact tomorrow that we're all working on and that we've also found in our um, 
as a result of our VidCo programs is, you know, exposing students to professional pathways, um, exposing them to all the different types of roles that they would play in a tech company. So they could be an illustrator, they could be a photographer, they could be a product manager, they could be a programmer. And we do introduce all those different types of skill sets on the big code. So here are some of the um, research questions that were asked um, after um, during this after school program. And so we see big increases with big code and we'd love, this is really what we want to support in libraries, it's huge leaps in students confidence in their coding abilities, huge leaps in their identity as a programmer, and huge leaps in terms of the people or the patrons or the students who think of themselves as technology people. So great. And, you know, a lot of that goes towards um, obviously creating the opportunities, but also, again, integrating it with creative film workshops at the library because it just draws in a totally different crowd. And so it's fun to be able to offer Vidco in that environment and have people feel really excited and, and supported and included. So one day events are obviously very popular too. Um, and so typically we say our library partners and schools offer one to five workshops. We've seen a lot of library sites launch with that. Even a monthly workshop with the same one for a couple months just to bring people in to let them know about the resource, about the coding opportunities. So that's something that um, is really important to implementations and launches. And so what do you need to, to launch either a hackathon or a one day workshop or potentially after school coding club um, with VidCode? People, um, we support your staff. So we have curated, um, training sessions sometimes with different staff members, um, but we also do have a lot of support just as the year goes on. And so we'll be sharing our emails, but also some of our support lines there. Um, space is good, grab a big room. And then in terms, because it's just a website, so a regular computer, laptop, it does work on iPads, that's fine. We think it's better to have a keyboard if possible. Um, and if AV equipment's available, great, but that's definitely not required. And so this will also be included in the PDF that we share with you guys. Um, but just kind of fleshing out how hackathons or game jams can be a great entry point. So I've also included in this presentation, we've had hundreds of organizations use BigCode for full day hackathons. And so we have um, tons of sample agendas to share with you guys. Um, and this is one uh, very, con you know, all of them are tweaked, um, but here's an example um, in terms of, you know, starting this, the day with a welcome. Um, typically we, we, at a VidCode hackathon, there's a brainstorming session. So again, going back to that digital media side, what do you want to create? What are you researching right now? Let's pull some photos. Let's pull some assets, start thinking, let's start storyboarding. Um, paper prototyping, these are some of the cues that we have in our lesson plans to break off the computer and do in-person um, collaboration to pair with the online tutorials. And so I'm not going to walk through the entire example here, um, but we've included in the presentation that we'll share with you a couple examples of um, schools and sites that have used VidCode for hackathons. Some really neat um, projects created. There's a second example here as well, um, a larger hackathon that we did with YouTube, um, specifically with Teen Girls. So yeah, in this um, slide presentation that I'll share with you guys, um, you will have um, access to a sample, we call it Hack Pack, um, which is some of these typical documents um, that people have used to run hackathons with VidCode. So lastly, independent use is a huge use case um, for library patrons as well. Um, we do provide resources to help learners remotely when they run into bugs. Uh, we have debugging guides, 
um, we have tips, we have lesson plans, and then we can also connect to them to the support team. So they essentially have an educator account um, where they can connect directly with us as well as typically with library staff as well. And so I touched on this earlier, but there's so many cool ways to do homework with VidCode. Um, to have VidCode replace a PowerPoint presentation, um, a poster session, or combine it with another computer science activity. Um, and so the possibilities are really endless, but here are, you know, a couple examples. Um, I mentioned reading. This is a sixth grade English homework project um, where students created digital postcards from the 1930s representing places in Arthur Ransom's Swallows and Amazons. Pretty, pretty neat. All right. Well, thank you. That is, comes to the end of our 101 workshop. Again, really our goal here has been to set everyone up with accounts, show you how to both be an individual learner yourself, start going through the tutorials, um, and also how to become a VidCode educator and run your own workshops after school, school clubs um, and hackathons. So let me see, I thought, it, well, first of all, I'd love to um, leave a moment here for any questions. So please go ahead and write those in the comments. We'll definitely leave some time for that. Um, and as people share questions, um, just want to review some next steps. Um, so great next steps um, to take on after this webinar um, is sign up for our educator account. I hope you added yourself um, today as a student as well. Um, but definitely sign up as a teacher. That's a great way to pilot um, or launch your coursework if you're already a partner. Um, and then if you are new to VidCode and want to learn how to use VidCode in your library, uh, we'd love to talk to you individually. So um, you can click on this Calendly link to set up a time with our team. And then we also would love you to reach out to us. We're really passionate about having people behind the product available. Um, when we were learning a program that was so important to not just be tossed resources, but to have a community. Um, and so we're really excited to talk to you today. So appreciative of your time. Uh, I'm Alexandra or Ali, uh, co-founder and CEO of VidCode. Um, my email's here. Please feel free to reach out with questions, feedback, um, anything you want. And then Teresa has been managing our questions and this entire getting everyone on the call. And she works with a ton of our library partners. So she is a really great person um, to reach out to specifically with the library questions as well. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. We'll, we'll keep answering questions if and when they come in. Um, but just wanna say thank you again to everyone who joined the webinar today. And we look forward to, forward to coding with you this fall. Take care guys.